How's it going teams? Welcome back to the channel. Keith here from Come On The Hoop Celtic. I hope you like the wine bottle in the background and the lovely jacket. So, big game on Wednesday night. Fernavalos at home. The Hungarian champions which knocked out Drew Gardens in the previous round. It's a home in Celtic Park. Quarter 8 kickoff. No fans just yet at the game. Sad times. Football's not without the fans as we all say. The famous Jock Steen said. But look at... Um, up for a tough game, it's not going to be a walkabout like the way we done KR Reykjavik. This team in business, they want to cause an upset and we're going to find it very hard to break this team down. Could be a walk in the park a full time, you know, could be 3 or 4 nil, but I'm expecting a 2 nil victory here. I think um, they surprised a lot of people in the previous round. They um, Their team that won the league by 13 points, very similar to us last season. They have over 20 titles in Hungarian football. They've won over 20 cups as well. They wear the hoops. They're meant to be a fascist club. That's what that, that's what people are saying to me on social media. I don't really care because the fans are not going to be there anyway. It's just going to be the team. So, um, look at tough game. I could see it being a nil all at half time. And then with Sebastian in the second half. My starting lineup will be Barkas and Goal. He was quite good the weekend. Came out, felt... Very comfortable coming out for one on ones, controlling his box, even with corners and crosses, he was quite good. I was very impressed with him. Even playing from the back, he was quite good. So um Barkas and goal. Right back's a tough one because Alamut is obviously started the two games against Reykjavik and Dundee United. I think he's gonna stick with Alhamid. Safe option, you know. I think he will. I would play Fing Pong for pace and velocity, but he's not gonna start Fing Pong. He could change his mind. So Fring Pong um, won't be getting the nod up at ABL Hammett. Left back is going to be Greg Taylor, you know. We have no competition at left back at the moment. We need to strengthen that position. Simple as that. I'm sick of saying it when it comes to Greg Taylor. We give Greg the benefit of the doubt. We, we bring him in last summer. Let him give him a bit of time. If he's injury free and he can provide assist up them wings and defend well. That's all we're looking for, you know. That's all we're looking for. So Greg left back. I bring Oyer back in, take Beaton out. Obviously, Christopher Oyer has been playing the last two games. He featured it against Dundee United the second um, half of the game. But do you know what? Bring him back in. Him and Julian in there are quite solid when they want to be. You know, there has been stages so far. Obviously, Comerick and stuff, they're wearing at the levels. But at home, they should be more comfortable. Obviously, they know the pitch quite well. So, um, Julian and Oyer in there. Defensive midfielder. A lot of people are calling for Olivier Nicham to come in. I'm going to go Scott Brown. I back Scott Brown. He's fully fit. He's a captain. Let's cherish Brownie's moments, as I said before. We need him in there for the European games. He knows how to intimidate players on the, the other team and wind, wind them up. So, Brownie in there all day, every day. Midfield, I'm going to go with the um, same as I was the weekend. I'm going to go with Ryan on the right. Obviously, Ryan played decent enough on the right. Spells his distribution was poor from corners and stuff, but I'm gonna give it to Ryan Christie. Obviously, it was his shot that got us the um, got us the um, shot chance for the goal. Yet his goal the weekend, so I'm gonna go with Ryan on the right on the left. Mohamed Anusi, he was brilliant against Reykjavik, but Reykjavik are a semi pro team, you know. This is a, a stronger team, hopefully, he can turn up for the game. He was lost the weekend, he just wasn't great the weekend. There were spells where he's just like. Where's Mohamed Anusi? Where is he? You know, um, Callum Mack, he was lost as well the weekend as spells of the game. He needs to turn up. You know, Callum Mack is a phenomenal player. He's probably our, our best player besides Edward. You know, he's unbelievable and hopefully he can get together and be in there. And then um, Olivier as well. I'm going to play Olivier, even though I said defensive midfielder. I'm going to put Olivier in there. Obviously, put Callum Mack as the number nine. Olivier we saw Bruni and then Edward up front as well. Like Edward obviously didn't score the weekend. Let's see if he can score for us at home in European qualification. It matters. It matters to him massively as well. Like especially for his valuation down towards the end of the season. To Leeds fans, to Villa fans, to Brighton fans, wake up. He is not leaving Celtic until 
10 in a row is accomplished. So stop all his Instagram posts saying, oh, we're going to get him for 30 million. He's not going. That's it. He's not going. He's not being sold. And that's it. If he gets sold by October, fair play to whoever gets him, but he's not going to go. You know, he loves Celtic. He feels like he's part of family at Celtic. So I can't see him going anywhere. Speaking of transfers, uh, let's move on. Shane Duffy. It's a bit of a twerking situation at the moment. His brother put up a picture on Instagram of the Celtic crest on as his story and his picture as well. So could be a hint. Could be a hint that we could get him over the line. And then there's pictures of him on a plane today. He obviously, he's playing it. He's going to play. Actually, he's not going to play. He's going to train in St. Andrews. So that's what the crack is there with Brighton and Hove Albion. Um, look, he has the reports that he snubbed the offer from West Ham permanent deal of 8.5 million. He snubbed Newcastle, he snubbed Leeds. He wants to come to the champions. He wants to make history. He wants to be a part of 10 in a row. Maybe a quad treble winner as well. Maybe we get the Scottish Cup as well over the line. We'll have to see. Obviously, could progress for Europe as well, which is more teasing for him as well. Look, we all want Shane Duffy. There's no question about it. Whoever this is great not to take Shane Duffy is mad. They're absolutely mad off their heads. But come on, Duffy, get it together. Get the representatives aboard. Get Celtic aboard. Hopefully, we get this finalised within the next couple of days so we can all chill out about centre back and focus on getting left back and maybe defensive midfielder sorted as well. The other news is David Turnbull is meant to be a done deal for Motherwell. This is a guy that was basically meant to be a done deal last year. Pictures of him, obviously, with Neil Lennon in the boardroom and then the medical fail down to his knee injury. Look, at, he's highly rated by a lot of Scottish people in the Scottish game. He was injured the majority of last season. The previous season, he was absolutely cracking. You know, like 18 goals in the whole, the whole season and then I think it was like 17 assists. Could correct me if I'm wrong with the assists, but um, my personal opinion, David Turnbull, I wouldn't sign him just now. As I said before, I'd give him the season at Motherwell to get back into the, the gist of things. I know Motherwell is struggling at the moment and you need someone like him. I just think there's no point having him. We have a great midfield department. We have Rodgers in there, which is, I don't know what's going on with Tom Rodgers. If Turnbull comes in, I wish him the very best. I will be looking forward to seeing him obviously represent the hoops, but I still think I'd give him the season at Motherwell. But the t- reports is 2.7 million with 200 grand add ons, and there's talks of always loaning a player out to them. So if it's Aaron Henderson going the other way, I don't know what to think of that, you know. Young Hendo's class he is, or maybe um, maybe the young boy as well. I can't even think of the, the last from Liverpool, but yeah. That boy there, you know, O'Connell, that's it, that's his name. Luca O'Connell. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, that's really it, you know, there's not much else going on. Regards to the tour jersey, I absolutely love it. I love the way that the clover is class in it. It's um obviously the Love Street mint down the down there, and then it's black, the V-neck is class on it. Obviously, the clover in the back of it, like the two other jerseys. A lot of people probably will buy it without the daff a bit, you know, like this jersey is without the daff a bit. But um, I, I'm going to actually get it with the daft, but I think the colour brings it out a bit more. It's 72 quid, 72 euros from me if I want to buy in Ireland. I bought it off the Celtic Star, but a right now 10, I have to give it about a 9 out of 10. You know, I just think there's something missing with it. You know, I like the way on the on the uh, sleeves, it's unbelievable. Like the cuffs are unbelievable and the arms. I like the way it's designed with the little pin, pin stripes on it. So um, nice kit, looking forward to it. Obviously winning trophies. Getting historic away wins in it. We'll have to see. But I always enjoy the channel. I'm 100 away from 4K. I really appreciate it if you could subscribe. And comment below what you think of the game on Wednesday coming up. And let us know what you think of David Turnbull. Shane Duffy. Tom Rogic being out in the, the dark with his Qatari links. You know. Let us know what you think. And I'll speak to you all soon. Hail hail. Up the Celts. Roll on Wednesday. Up the boys.